Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, let's look at a geometric proof. We know the square root 2 is irrational number. And you can find the standard proof in many textbooks, such as analysis, number theory, discrete math, etc. In those textbooks, the proof is presented in an algebraic way. It's not very intuitive to visualize. Today, let's look at a geometric proof, which is very elegant. At the end of this video, I use one slide to summarize the story on the discovery of this proof. Now let's start. So we will prove it by making contradictions. Assume square root 2 is rational, so it can be written as p over q, where p and q are positive integers. Then we can construct the right angle triangle with two sides to be 1 and the hypotenuse to be square root 2. To avoid confusion, we use p over q to replace square root 2 as the hypotenuse. Then we multiply q to all the three sides, so we scale it into a bigger triangle, with two sides equal to q and the hypotenuse equal to p. So we know from the Pythagoras theorem, the q square plus q square equals to p square. And we know here p and q, they are integers. So it means when the hypotenuse equals to this integer p, then this equation has integer solutions for q. And this indicates that there must be a smallest positive integer m, such that when the hypotenuse equals to m, then this equation has integer solutions n, such that n square plus n square equals to m square. And note that this indication is the core step for this proof. So before we proceed to the geometric proof, we need to make sure to completely understand this step. I copy this step here. And before we completely understand this sentence, I put a question mark here. Let's see an example to help us better understand this step. Suppose one day, we have a big discovery, say the square root 2 equals to 7071 divided by 5000. Surely this is not true, only for an example. Then we can construct this right angle triangle here. So at least for this integer p equals to 7071, this equation holds. Next, we just count down. Here we start from 7071. Then we try 7070 to see if we can find integer solution for x. Next, we try the 7069 to see if we can find integer solutions for x. Keep going until we count down to the 1. After we've done the whole process, we want to see if we can find other smaller integer solutions for this equation. So we have two possibilities. First, if we can find the smallest integer to make this equation hold, for example, you found p equals to 141, this equation still holds for some integer. In this case, the smallest positive integer for m is equal to 141. And another possibility is, if we cannot find other smaller integers to make this equation hold, in this case, the smallest positive integer m equals to 7071, which is the solution in the very beginning equation. In either case, we can always find the integer m, so that means there must be a smallest positive integer m to make this equation hold. So I hope this example helps you better understand this step, so I remove the question mark. Here, I briefly summarize the key step from previous slide. Now we proceed to the geometric step. We know the n square equals to the area of this blue square, and m square equals to the area of this yellow square. From the equation, n square plus n square equals to m square. In geometry, it means the sum for the areas of these two blue square equals to the area of this yellow square. And keep in mind, m is the smallest integer to make this equation hold. So that means this is the smallest pattern configuration 
satisfying both conditions. First is to add two small squares area equals to the big square. The second condition is their size are integers. So let's see what happens if we fill these two blue squares into this yellow square. First, we move the yellow square here. Then we fill in the first blue square. Then we fill in the second one. So we can see there's an overlapped region colored in the dark blue. So this region is counted twice. And we have two small yellow squares uncovered. So that means the sum for the area of these two small yellow squares equals to the area of this blue square. Using geometry, we can compute the length for those size of squares. And we simplify it. And note that their size are integers. So can you see the contradiction here? Finally, let's see where the contradiction comes from. So for the left panel, we can see the original claim is this is the smallest pattern configuration satisfying both conditions. But now we got an even smaller pattern configuration satisfying both conditions. So that means the original claim is not the smallest one. So we got a contradiction. Therefore, our initial assumption is false. So the square root 2 must be irrational. At the end of this video, I use one slide to summarize the story on the discovery of this proof. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like it.